History Hour podcast is made possible with our partner WUPI 92.1 FM, The Owl. On peace and press Kyle's number one hit music station. Welcome to the show, history lovers, and hello to you from whatever place you're listening to us today. This is Evan, Bethany, Caleb, and Chris, your hosts. Hello. What's up? We're all members of the University of Venom Prescott History Club, and we are broadcasting from the WUPI 92.1 FM in Prescott. On this episode of our podcast series, we will be talking about the Norse mythology, some aspects of it at least, we'll try to cover as much as possible, and uh, we'll try to have some extra time to talk about uh, some Viking stories. So, so before the Norse uh, converted to Christianity uh, during, of course, the Middle Ages, and we know how bloody that was and uh, what a great destruction for the uh, Norse uh, um, traditions that, that was with, l- they lost a lot of, the, of their culture. Uh, they, of course, had their own vibrant uh, native uh, pagan religion. So the centerpiece of that religion was what we call today Norse mythology. And it's a set of, you know, religious stories that gave meaning to uh, uh, the Norse people and the Vikings. Uh, It it gave meaning to their lives. That's what they believed in. And, of course, just like any other mythology, like the Greek mythology and the Egyptian mythology, they are revolved around gods and goddesses with uh, complex characters and stories and relationship between each other. Some of them being, you know, Odin, Thor... um, Freya, Loki, I know Caleb is excited about Loki. <laughs> His stories Loki. are amazing. <laughs> totally. And of course, uh, when you say Norse mythology today, most people go to... Um, I'm going to take us over right here, Evan. The Thor from the movies is not the Thor from the myths. Thank Same you. with Loki. Thank you. The wordsy thing with the hammer isn't even real. It's just heavy. <laughs> it makes it more entertaining, though. And hopefully we'll, t- we'll talk about <laughs> it. And I mean, we have Chris here. He's our... Uh, Specialist in uh, movies, especially 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 Marvel. Don't make fun of my nerdness. <laughs> <laughs> Same, <laughs> true. Okay, so you guys excited? Should we get started? Yes. Yeah. Uh, All right. Who wants to begin? I thought you wanted to begin because you what you do in okay, the creation. Okay. Story? You had the All creation right. story and that kind of thing, so I thought that sure. was a good starting. You should point. probably begin with the creation story. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a great a, thing. That's a good thing start. you know, I <laughs> will. And I will take that chance and s- begin, I guess. Uh, so with the creation story, and again, we're talking about mythology. There's a lot of things that go on in, in the mythological story. Um, you know, a lot of beasts and... Uh, Essentially, what you know as logic goes out the window. <laughs> uh, for us, yes. For them, it was what they believed. So the Norse creation myth, uh, the cosmogony, uh, which is, you know, the birth of a, of a cosmos... Uh, it's probably like you know, like it's very rich in story, and uh, it's probably one of the biggest uh, masterpieces of their religion. So I guess I'll start with uh, give, giving some you know point by point examples of it, and you guys, please feel free to jump in, and uh, we'll start with this. So, um, so, so before before there, was, there was, was any soil or sky or you know any green or living thing on the planet, there was the Ginugagap. Gnuga Gap, yeah. Uh, which was the chaos, uh, the chaos, the abyss. And, you know, there was like perfect silence, uh, darkness, and uh, uh, it was between the homeland of the element of fire, uh, Muspelheim, and the homeland of um, the element of ice, Ni- Niflheim. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we, we're going to talk later about the uh, Tree of Life, Yggdrasil, and where each of these... Uh, uh, different um, realms. Realms, yes, they're where they exist, and I, I believe there were seven. There were nine. nine. There were nine yeah. realms. There was. I'm see if I can name them all. It's a long list: Midgard, Asgard, Niflheim, uh, Niflheim, Muspelheim, Vanaheim, Alfheim, Hell, Trollheim, which is where we get Hell. Yes. Which is where we get Hell to the Actually, Christian religion. The yep, yep. All right. So, Muspelheim was the element, uh, the realm of fire, and uh, Niflheim was, again, the element of ice. 
So from Niflheim, uh, the element of ice, um, some of the flames from Muspelheim crept towards each, each other until they met in uh, Ginungagap, which is the abyss that we talked about. Very strange name. <laughs> I don't know. Like It's really fun to say, though. <laughs> I don't know the translation, though. I'm going to just apologize for everyone listening. We're not going to pronounce any of this right. <laughs> yeah. Wh- probably Bethany can yeah. <laughs> pronounce some. <laughs> um, so, amidst, you know, the uh, spurring of the ice and the flames, uh, the fire melted the ice and the drops formed themselves into Ymir, the screamer. So, and that was the first of the uh, godlike uh, but destructive giants. He was the first giant. Well, in a lot of stories, Ymir wasn't destructive. He was just there. Yeah. So he's, he's the, the giants first... were the opposite to the gods. So he's the first godlike creature ever created. So Ymir, uh, you know, was a... Um, who reproduced ex- asexually. He didn't need sex. <laughs> No. He did not need sex to reproduce. That's Isn't there uh, something about a cow and like that's a salt lick? Yeah, p- part, of, part, oh, of oh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> part of the letter story. No, it's, <laughs> it, it's okay. It's really funny. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> reproduce as- asexually. Okay, we go through <laughs> that. So, and when he slept, you know, more giants um, leapt, you know, they were born from his leg and from mm-hmm. the sweat of his armpits. Yeah. It's a that's great place to be born from. It's natural. <laughs> yeah, we're Vikings. That happens to everybody. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm go to bed. I have few mortal kids. Mortal, immortal. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as the frost continued to melt, a cow, Audhumla, um, <laughs> did I say that right? Audhumla, mm-hmm. which uh, translates to the uh, abundance of humming, emerged from it. So, that's the second melting. The second life that created from the melting, you know, melt ice and there is life. The two primordial elements coming together. That's what I learned in chemistry class. You melt ice, you have kids. Done. <laughs> <laughs> that's chemistry I believe, class. I believe that's how babies are born, yes. <laughs> so, we have Abdhula, which was um, a cow. And uh, she nourished, actually, Ymir with her milk. And uh, in turn, was... Uh, she was nourished by salt licks in the ice. Okay, yeah, that's where so the salt lick came her in. licks uh, slowly um, uncovered Buri, which uh, translates to progenitor, the first of the Aeir tribe of gods. So Buri was uh, a son named had a son named Bor, which Bor translates to son, a hey, son, son, you know. So, um, Bor. The first of the Aeir uh, gods uh, married Bestla, which uh, translates to wife, the daughter of the giant Bolthron, which uh, comes out to as baleful thorn. So the half god, half giant children of Bor and Bestla were Odin, that's where Odin comes in, who became the chief of the Aeir gods, and uh, with his two brothers, Vili and Ve. It's Azir. The Azir. A seer. Uh, we seer have, fact. you know, uh, so now we have Odin, which is the son of Bor and Besla. And uh, he has two brothers, Vili and Ve. So Odin's and his brothers uh, killed Ymir and uh, set about constructing the world from his corpse. So they killed Ymir, which uh, uh, Ymir was um, the giant, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah, so they killed the giant and uh, with his corpse they created the, our world. One thing kind of got to get, in orthology, they weren't I mean, the gods of the ones you worship, but technically there wasn't a good guy or a bad guy. They were just two opposing sides. Yeah. There's some characters on the side that aren't too great, but they're, the giants aren't evil. They're just not with the gods, mm-hmm. the ones you worship. Oh, so it's kind of weird. Uh, all these mythologies, Greek, uh, Egyptian, and Norse, all have like their sons rising up and taking over the fathers. Yeah, all the time. Which is weird. <laughs> all the time. So, Ymir, again, the first giant, uh, was killed by his sons, Odin, Vili, and Ve. And um, from his blood, they created the oceans. And his skin and muscles became the soil. And... Uh, Vegetation came from his hair, 
and uh, the clouds from his brains. Mm -hmm. well, very good to think about it. And uh, the sky from his skull. Okay? So then we have four dwarves corresponding to the four cardinal points held Emir's skull um, above the earth. So... Terrible, terrible job. You have those four dwarves that carry, uh, that, that just hold uh, Emir's skull. It's like the story of Atlas holding above the sky. Exactly. I'll say, at least it's four of them instead of one of them. <laughs> so, after you have the first creation by Odin and his brothers, uh, they eventually form the first man and woman, Ask and Emdla, from um, two tree trunks and build a fence around their dwelling place, Midgar, to protect them from the giants. Which is presumably the equator. <laughs> presumably. Midgard is the realm of our humanity. Earth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Midgard, yeah. So, again, um, order from chaos. Um, so, thematically, Ymir is the personification of chaos before creation. That first giant. Which, uh, of course, is also depicted as the um, impersonation of... Of uh, Ginumgagap. Mm -hmm. So both Emir and Ginumgagap are uh, ways of talking about uh, a limitless po potential that uh, hasn't yet become the particular things that we find around us. Mm -hmm. That's how we can uh, see this according to this publication here. Um, after we have the first uh, humans, the men and women, uh, and they're, you know, they're protected in Midgar from the giants. We see that a lot of, um, there's a lot of conflict in this uh, religion. And uh, that's very well shown in the, with the Vikings. The whole life is about conflict and engagements and in battle and you have to die to go to paradise. Yeah. And As you're saying, basically Helheim is the realm of unhonorable death. Which is basically anything not holding a sword. Anything not holding a sword with your enemy's skull in your hand, you don't go to heaven. <laughs> Quote, unquote, heaven. So it's just like, you know, how the three gods killed Ymir to create something. So I th I, it's that relationship when it comes to the creation myth. But back to, like, the population of <laughs> Scandinavia back then, like, 95% of the people just stayed home. So, like the 10 percent that were vikings were like that's what they were looking almost for. no one went to valhalla yeah. <laughs> nobody went, yeah, no. <laughs> no one went to valhalla. they were like valhalla who <laughs> so, screw <laughs> fighting for ragnarok <laughs> and the norse you know saw their gods as the uh, vital forces that had the that held their cosmos together so when the gods you know um they impacted the world or something happened to the world. There was uh, a change in order and uh, how their their whole cosmos was um, used, you know, how it was created. So enough with the creation story. Um, how about we go back and go from the beginning with the tree that Bethany has, the uh, genealogical tree. And uh, let's go, let's take our steps and let's go through gods and whatever we find a very interesting god with a great story. We'll just uh, de develop his own uh, story. I, I know Caleb is very interesting to talk to you guys about uh, Loki. Okay, so I have, I have the tree in front of me. And so the top of it is Ymir. And then he gave birth to a bunch of giants. And then from there, he gave set uh, birth to a set of two, three girls and two boys. Two of them... Um, Two sets of the boys and two sets of the girls gave birth to um, plenty of other people. And then we have down here Loki, a horse. Then there's Fenrir. Um, oh my gosh. Maybe Caleb can say the serpent. I can't remember how to say I looked this up. Jorgmagum. It's so weird. It's Jormung Jormungand. Oh, I just said it. Jormungand. Yeah. Yeah. I just said it in it's a Norwegian accent. It's such a accent. weird pronunciation. Um, it actually and then... If I may branch off that, the story with the horse. That's a real story. Yeah. Let's, let's go to it. I'll yeah. know more about it. So it's been there. Yeah. Um, Once Bethany's finished, I'll um, jump into it. And then we have the cow, the uh, cow that we talked about before, Admbala. And then um, we have a bunch of the other gods that everybody knows, Tyr, Mimir, um, 
and then we keep going down we get to frigg and odin and yord and uh boldar and a bunch of other people for seti sif thor skadi njord um and then we end the tree with uh fir uh gidder fair freya and Odr. but yeah that's that's the tree um it's nicely animated <laughs> it's pretty long yeah the animation is really cool and uh I think um, it's the tree depicts uh, Norse life. Um, if you see the people, like you have wolves, you have horses, you have you know women doing their chores and stuff, and people like warlike, and uh, you have a lot of the no of the Norse in I have the a tree. Yeah, I have a um, a story that I wanted to tell about Skadi, and she's she's got her skis on her, so that's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, so I guess uh, I guess I'll start from this point, and uh, we talked about you know the uh, line of the you know, of gods, the genealogy, and what the Norse people believed in. So let's talk about you know like the cosmology now. We kind of gave uh, a slight overview of the creation myth. Let's talk about where the world is, and it's really cool, and it goes back to you know Nor what the Norse people had in their possession. What's in Northern Europe? Trees. <laughs> so, the uh, story goes that um, the world tree, Yggdrasil, was uh, the m this mighty, huge tree, the world tree, that, um, whose, you know, the trunk of the tree rises as the geographical center of the Norse spiritual cosmos. And there is nine worlds, and uh, they are arranged around the tree. And um, so the tree actually holds the universe together, holds all the worlds together, and it connects them in some way. And uh, another point that they have is that because of this, the well-being of the cosmos be depends on the well-being of Yggdrasil. And I believe, uh, so when the tree, you know, trembles, that's a sign of Ragnarok, which is a story that oh, we'll we will cover at, at the end. The Ragnarok will try to end with that one and the destruction of the universe. I'm going to, if I may, interrupt you and go on over what each world is. Because yes. on the tree there were nine realms. Exactly. So go over the nine realms, Caleb. And after that, there's a, slight, there's a small little fun story. I tell you, it takes three minutes. So the nine worlds were, I'm reading them in order of what I have on my notes, not in any particular order. There was Niflheim, the land of ice and mist, because of the whole fire and melting. The home of the primordial el element. Muspelheim, the land of fire. What we would think of as hell, but not actually their hell. Just a fiery landscape. Asgard, the land of the, Az the Aesir, the gods. Well, the warlike gods. Midgard, the land of humanity. Um, basically, that's the very center of the tree. Not the most important, but it's the center of it. Jot Jotunheim, Jotunheim, either or. The land of the giants. The frost giants, other kind of giants. That's where they reside. Vanaheim, the land of the Vanir gods. The more... Not creative, more like fertility, uh, loving, that kind of, those kind of gods. Alfheim, land of the light elves. Svartalheim, land of the dwarves. It's said to be a massive labyrinth of mines and uh, blacksmith shops. And Helheim, the land is honored dead. Mm -hmm. Each of this place had their own part to play in the world. But each one, let's put it this way. If you lost one of them, the whole tree would fall apart. True. There's a balance, yeah. And a quick story about Yggdrasil is kind of cool. The very top, the, I can't, I'm cannot remember the eagle's name. The life I've been trying for the last hour. There's an eagle who uh, takes care of the tree. The very bottom, there is a dragon named Needhog mm -hmm. who uh, does not like the tree. So he chews on his root, trying to destroy it. And in between, this is, I'm serious right now, guys. There is a s rabid, angry squirrel named uh, Raskatosk, I believe, who trades in who pretends to trade insults back and forth between the eagle and a uh, dragon trying to incite Ragnarok. It is a squirrel <laughs> that wants the end of the world. Oh, I'm God. not making this up. A squirrel it's that amazing. wants the end of the world. That right? should be a radio show. It's amazing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's the, the nine realms. Those are the each worlds we happen to exist in. Mm -hmm. According. Great. Yeah. Uh, what do we want to move from here now? It's they just... It just we we can possibly cover all of this in one episode. There, it's not possible. So we wanna you know give you like a brief overview of what's happening with Norse mythology, 
And uh, Bethany, do you have anything uh, I do. from I here? I think um, so. The the best way we can segue into that is I think we need to talk about um, the different like little spirits or things that they believe to live on the land. Um, one of them was uh, land spirits, land <laughs> um, um And so I have some interesting things about them. Uh, they can bless or curse those who live or travel within their land and can be blessed or cursed by them in return. Um, they're fierce protectors of their native lands and seldom tolerant of <laughs> mistreatment and dishonor and seem to have a very passionate disposal disposition in general. Um, so they're kind of just like, uh, the best way I can say this is kind of like ghosts that inhabit the land. Um, and, protect the people that live there or like from like intruders or um uh just people who dishonor them they kind of like fight back so you don't want to upset them uh land spirits and there's like a fine line between land spirits and uh elves and trolls and um i can't remember the other thing but um they're all kind of like the same, but they're different at the same time. And history is not really too clear on how they differentiated. But um, I have a f an interesting um, fact. Um, the first law code of Iceland, um, one of them was, it was in uh, 1930. And it instructed those who were traveling to Iceland by ship to remove the dragon heads from their longships. Because they didn't want to frighten the land spirits. And if really? you did, you would be like... You, I don't know what they would make you do, but it would be bad news. That's really cool. I, I forgot where it was, but uh, they uh, they thought there was a gnome a settlement, so they mm -hmm. built the road around what, where they thought the gnome settlement was mm -hmm. so that they wouldn't disturb it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was in Iceland or whatever. a lot of respect. Right? That's For right. reference, that's in modern. I know the story you're talking about. That's modern time. That's today. Really? Yeah. No, the, the gnome thing. Yeah, wow. that's today. It was th it's today. Where is that? Uh, it's somewhere like it must be in Iceland. Iceland is like they're extremely like they still yeah it's like somewhere in the Arctic Circle. I don't remember. Where. There's parts of Norway like in Norway. I know um, my mom was always talking about trolls. Like everything's a troll. So and I know uh, Iceland. They're v they're still really like deep into their you know Norse roots and Norse mytho Norse mythology. So I I believe it, that definitely sounds like something that would happen in Iceland. <laughs> But um, yeah. and, uh, and just for reference, I play. I'm playing some music in the in the background from uh, one of my favorite groups, uh, Waduna. Wadruma, yeah. Yeah, they're Norwegian <laughs> and they play um, they play uh, old you know Viking and Norse songs. So it's really cool and yeah. ve and very traditional. If you if you've ever watched the TV show Vikings, which I know Evan and I love, this is love like the their show, theme. Yes. I, I still need to watch that. The it's a great <laughs> show. They're, they're coming out with a new season. But anyway, yeah. we derail. <laughs> Digress. I'm if I'm okay, it's okay. Everyone, I think I'm transitioned to a story about the genealogy. You yeah. mentioned there was a horse. I want to explain that. Let's oh, go yeah. back to the, the horse. The story's yes. amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's essentially, uh, if I pull the page back up, so I can find it. I'll listen to the music for a little bit. All right, and back to Caleb. Uh, that, w that was a nice break. And ba back to Caleb with his uh The fortification story. of Asgard. Essentially, uh, Asgard's the home of the... The Aesir gods, the warlike. They're the warriors, per se. Uh, Smith arrived at Asgard one day and offered to build the gods a high wall around their home to protect them from any who might wish them ill. The smith, a, a definitely a giant, said he complete his work in mere three seasons, but demanded a steep compensation. The hand of the goddess Freya in marriage, as well as the sun and the moon, not metaphorical, the actual sun and moon. Naturally, the gods were like, I don't like that deal. I don't want to pitch the everything in night... In permanent darkness. The gods took counsel, counsel together. Freya was, uh-uh, I'm not marrying any giant. I can't blame her. Loki suggested, <laughs> I have an idea. The builder should obtain that which he, he gets his deal if he can build it all within one winter. The gods say, that's not possible. We'll take the deal. Build us a wall. Why not? <laughs> build us a wall. <laughs> so basically, they agree. The giant smith, however, was like, yeah, I can do that. Provided the gods swear oaths to ensure that if the conditions were met, he would do it. They would hold up their bargain. The builder actually started to do it. 
the reason is, is he had a horse that could carry boulders the size of Umpy hundreds of miles. <laughs> and they're like, what? this is a problem. He's doing this. So near the end of the winter, with like three, no, one day left. All they need to be put in place were the stones for the front gates. The mm-hmm. gods are in a panic with all the swords pointing at Loki. He crammed this plan. He failed. In a spur of self-preservation, Loki says, hold up, hold up, hold up. Don't stab me yet. If I can manage to distract that horse and make sure he cannot complete it, you'll spare me, right? They agree. So what he does, I'm not kidding, turns into a female horse. And just while the while his horse, what was his name again? Sorry. There's two different horses, actually, so I'm not sure which horse we're talking uh, about. There's the see. horse, and then there's something there. Hold on, sorry. That one. Yeah. Oh, Selfenir, yep. Thank you. Self, Selfenir? Selfenir. Selfenir. That was the name of the amazing draft horse that managed to pull boulders. While he was he looking for like stone... He's got, like, six legs. <laughs> no, not yet, actually. That's a different horse. Oh, Let me explain. I'm gonna get my horse. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of them? So, Savadati Sav- is, I'm not pronouncing that right, hunting for stones. Loki as a fe- as a mare. Not, he's a girl. Oh. Hun- yeah, wait you get a minute. Lo- you g- oh my gosh. Hold up, hold up. Basically, <laughs> Loki attracts this horse, and I'm going to quote the thing I'm reading. So, my Loki notes here. is the male horse? And no, he's- Loki no. Does- oh, Loki is the look, female. Look, look. Okay, I see. <laughs> Not that people uh, at home can see, but oh my gosh. Yeah, it's kind of PG-13. <laughs> I'm going to quote my uh, notes here. His heart his- wasn't the only organ that was aroused by delight and lust. He snapped his reins and bounded into the woods after her. The mayor ran all night, and, ap- and all night, Savathiti chased after her. Her being Loki. When morning came, the giant horse was still missing, and the now despairing giant knew there was no way he could finish the gate in time. The Aesir then paid the giant his wages the, they de- deemed he deserved. A fatal blow from Thor's hammer, which shattered his head into pieces no bigger than breadcrumbs. Meanwhile, deep in the forest, Savarati had caught up with Loki, who soon gave birth to a great eight-legged horse, Slipnir, who became the steed of Odin. That's the horse you're talking about. So Loki had uh, Loki gave birth to a horse. With a horse, and they came This up is why I love Loki. With the Loki. horse that was well, himself. Well, also, though, and uh, I'm going to quote this um, map here as well, from uh, Ymir's uh, daughter, Eng, um, Engboda. Mm-hmm. She had... Um, sexual relations with Loki, and they gave birth to Fenrir. Fenr- Fenrir, the yes. Uh, the the uh, wolf. The who wolf causes Ragnarok. Who causes the end of the world? Jormungandan, the, Jormungandan, yeah. the, the world serpent, a serpent so massive he's able to encircle the earth. And hell. And in Ragnarok, during Ragnarok, which is for those who aren't li- for listening, he's biting his Basically, tail. the end of the world. Yeah. Where everything explodes, mm-hmm. for lack of better terms. Um, Thor and uh, Jormungand are meant to fight and die together. Yeah. <laughs> Let me Thor is supposed that. to die. They're meant to fight and die, mo- mortally wounding each other. They, the, yeah, they, uh, the story goes yeah. of, of Nagarnok that they're supposed to die. They were not on the same side. Yeah, no. And uh, so Loki and uh, Angruba and, and... So Loki and uh, Angr- Angruboda give birth to Fenrir, a wolf, Jormungandan, <laughs> the... Serpent and hell, which looks like a very sad lady here. Hell <laughs> is actually, yeah. Trust me, I know. Hell sounds exactly like the Helheim I said earlier. That's because it is. Hell is the god of the goddess of death. She rules the land of the un. Uh, what's it called? Undes- what was it? Undeserving death. Unflattered. What was the word? Dishonorable. Thank Dishonorable. you. Dishonorable death. Dishonorable death. Yeah. It's all about. Um, I have a story of Odin, and it's a pretty popular one. But okay. not a, a lot of people know that Odin has one eye, but not a lot of people know why, I don't think. So, um... He's a pirate. Odin was Odin. <laughs> yeah, right. What, does he have a wooden <laughs> stump <laughs> leg, too? Uh, you have a masochist. <laughs> <laughs> Odin was always in search of wisdom. So much so, in fact, that he hung himself, wounded himself with a spear, and fasted on food from drink, food and drink for nine days and nine nights in order to discover the ruins. Um, so, in lieu of this, 
he was like, you know what? This isn't enough. I really, I want to know everything in the cosmos. And he went to Mimir's, um, basically his little well at like, I think it's like the center of Yggdrasil or something like that. Somewhere around there. The well of knowledge. Yeah, the well of knowledge, which is where Mimir is. And, um, he drinks from that well and that well possesses, uh, the cosmic knowledge, anything you can imagine. It, it has it. So Odin was like, can I drink from this well? And Mimir was like, not unless you give me your eye in return and compensation. And Odin, after what we don't know if he thought about it or if he just did it, but he gouged his eye out and dropped it into the well. And Mimir gave him a drink and he became Odin the All-Seeing. And we're not quite sure what knowledge he gained from this exactly, but it's definitely a metaphor for vision and perception. So if you think of lower self and higher self is what essentially what he gave away to see. So what he did when he was trying to get the ruins was he gave up his lower self to get to his higher self. And that's basically the exact same thing he did to, to um, when he gave his eye to Mimir for the mm-hmm. drink from the well of knowledge. Yeah. Wow. That's, that is, that's a really cool story. Yeah. And Odin's with crazy. more meaning in the back too, you know, mm-hmm. what's the next myth we, we, we're talking about? Who's next? I have two more. Go Actually, ahead. I have three more, but do you want me to go keep going? All yeah, right. yeah. So the next one that I thought was interesting, and I was, I'm really interested in the females of the, um, Asir, um, I have Skadi, and I mentioned her earlier. Uh, she was the daughter of a giant, um, that was killed by Thor in Asgard, and she went to Asgard to avenge her father's death, and because because she didn't have any didn't have any brothers, um, which is what normally would have happened, I guess. Um, they would avenge her his her, their father's death. She instead went. And so she shows up to the gates of Asgard fully armed, and they're all like, well, you can pick one of us to marry, but only by looking at our feet. And so she's thinking, oh, I know, I'm going to pick Baldur. She thinks he's the most handsome. So she's looking at their feet, and she picks who she thinks is Baldur, and instead she accidentally picks Nijord, uh, the god of the sea. Um, and that's not cool because she's sort of a mountain girl. She likes her skiing and her mushroom hunting. Um, as Norwegians would say, she likes her fruitless luftsleeve, um, which is just like gallivanting in the, in the fjords and stuff. And, uh, Nyord is completely the opposite of that. He's a, a loner that correct? lives, <laughs> yeah, he, he's a loner that lives in a cave that's damp, which is totally the opposite of what she likes and um so she picks him by accident and she has to marry him or she gets to marry him and uh she said they were trying to compensate on their marriage and (laughs) he had said like let's live in each other's realms or environments for like nine days at a time so they'd switch they'd go nine days in one place nine days in the other place finally skeddy was like I can't do this anymore, fishy boy. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> and they never actually divorced. Like, there's no talk of them separating. But from what we can assume after she was like, peace out, she I like... Mean, they're gods. They don't give a... Right. But she like went off and had a number of affairs with Odin. Aw. So that's... It's very romantic. Yeah. Um, right. Another one that I have is Brunhild, and I think you'll enjoy this, Evan, because I enjoyed the ending because I had no idea about this story until I researched it. But um, I titled it Running Through Hell with All Her Woes, <laughs> <laughs> and it'll make sense in a second. Uh, she was a Valkyrie um, who supported the wrong hero in a contest overseen by Odin. I'm not quite sure. I couldn't find out what contest it was, but she su- the whole main point of it is she supported the wrong hero. Um, she's made mortal by punishment and cast away into a prison slash castle thing made by shields. And inside this castle shield thing, she's laying in a ring of fire asleep for the entire time. And so a, a, f- a fellow 
what used to be immortal, um, Sigurd, uh, comes to rescue her and give her a ring and promise to marry her. He comes to the rescue. And so she crosses the ring of fire, grabs her. They go to a king, Gukki, and they ask, they go to his court and ask for permission to get married. His wife, who I don't know the name of her, but, uh, she's a sorceress and she is like, nah, I really like you, Sigurd. I want you to marry my daughter, Gudrun. And so she gives Sigurd a potion to forget Brunhilde. And she's not completely evil, though, cause be- because even though I don't understand why, she sent her back to the castle with the ring of fire and she's like asleep again. So she like everybody forgets everything. And so she sends she sends her back, but she sends her son, uh, Gunnar, um, to go rescue her again. And Gunnar is like goes to go rescue her but he gets there and he can't cross the ring of fire because he's 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 a frost giant yeah he's a frost giant but he's yeah oh yeah i forgot about that he's a frost giant but he's a wuss essentially i (laughs) I mean if you're made of ice why do you touch fire well because sigurd shapeshifts into him and crosses the ring of fire (laughs) Uh. so brunhild realizes this like, she wakes up after she's rescued by Gunnar, and she's like, oh my gosh, Gunnar, you saved my life. Like, we're going to live together and get married. And, like, everything's cool. They get back to the the court, and Brunhild and Gudrun get into a fight for some random reason. And all the secrets come out. She's like, Sigurd, I actually came to save you. And, you know, but now he's mine. He's my man. And... It's this whole thing, and they already have a kid. Um, I can't remember the kid's name, but they have a kid, and she gets so mad, she swears revenge on everybody, and so she kills everyone. Oh. (laughs) She just just went crazy, and she killed everyone, and they're having the, you know, traditional Viking burial for Sigurd on the long ship where they, you know, they bear, they, they set, they, him, on fire, they set yeah. him on fire and they set him out to sea. She jumps on the ship oh. and is like, we're going to die and go to hell together. Running through hell with all her woes. And she, she gets into hell with Sigurd and there's this giantess there. And she's like, which I think it might be hell, but I'm not quite sure if it's the same giantess, but the giantess was like, you're a, you're a bad girl like you you did that you really went for it and she's like bragging and she's like now we're gonna don't ever nobody talk to Sigurd we're we're this is our new life we're living here we're gonna live how we were supposed to nobody talk to us she's a psycho she's a psycho (laughs) stalker jesus joker (laughs) and they're they're like we're gonna live in harmony here in hell well that's the end of the story but in all of this madness they had a daughter Oh. Do you know who that daughter is, Evan? Who? Auslog. Ragnar, Ragnar's. Really? Ragnar's second wife. Auslog. Ragnar oh, Lothbrok. Auslog. Auslog. Okay. The I princess. D- yeah, she, she I hated her. She was I liked off. her. I For didn't. our audiences that don't know what we're talking about, <laughs> we are talking about the uh, series Vikings. Uh, <laughs> please go watch it. It's very amazing. And it talks about all the mythology, to be honest, yeah. in there. Um. And then the third one I have is Lagertha. Um, So I have a quote here. Among them was Lagertha, a skilled female warrior who, though a maiden, had the courage of a man and fought in front of the among the bravest with her hair loose over her shoulders. All marveled at her matchless deeds for her locks flying down her back betrayed that she was a woman. So basically in there's a fine line with Norse mythology with when you get to warriors and such Mm -hmm. and they don't really, because from all the Eddas, they don't really know who was real or who wasn't. And they could be based off a person, but they're not quite sure if that person is who they're written down as. Like uh, Ragnar Lothbrok. Ragnar, they have compelling evidence that he was in existence. He was. Yeah. We know that. Yeah. Right. But some of his uh, relations and like, people who he was with and were not Ivor, really and i yeah. the boneless yeah yeah some of the people that he married we're not too sure if they existed but lagertha 
either way in the show and in the others and everything was a pretty bad woman um so ragnar came to norway to avenge the death of his grandfather seward and um the humiliation of his wives and kinfolk at the hands of fro uh the king of sweden um and just for context ragnar and all these people are from the kingdom of denmark and denmark was it, they weren't really like kingdoms at this point but they were pretty much territories territories yeah. at this point and uh there so all of these people were from denmark and denmark was the territory of denmark at the time was pretty uh, big needless to say um he was greeted with a number of women dressed as men to volunteer and help him and lagertha was one of them um ragnar was so impressed by her and her attributes and in, in war and everything that um he asks her to be his wife but she's like no and she posts a dog and a bear outside her house to guard against ragnar ragnar kills both the animals and marries her and they have a do- two daughters but later remembers how she had tried to set the bear and dog to attack him he divorces her and marries another woman thora <laughs> nothing more is known of lagertha <laughs> but <laughs> Lagertha was like, You're I don't gone. really. She was like, you know, the like real feminist. Like, I don't really need you, but you know, wow. sometimes their stories. It's really f- interesting it's if you really like read the them. Series. No, nothing, nothing at <laughs> so, all like the series. So let me get this straight. <laughs> <laughs> Clarification. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the guy uh-huh. Ragnar wants to ma- uh, Ragnar wants to marry Agatha. Lagertha. La- Lagertha. Lagertha. Mm-hmm. And she says no, and lo- and and Locks goes to her house and yeah. has a bear and a a dog, a dog, <laughs> and uh, so he kills them, mm-hmm. marries her. Yeah. So after after she's she, like, yeah, it's fine, she, I guess. They have two like, kids. Oh. And <laughs> see, that's what I don't. It's the same with Skeddy. Like she goes up there <laughs> to avenge her. Man, father. that bear skin's really flattering. <laughs> She goes up there to avenge her father, and they're like, "Well, you can marry one of us." And she's like, "Okay." <laughs> like, I don't, I don't under, I don't quite understand it. But <laughs> and, the, and then many la- years later, and after many kids, they're like, "He's like, oh yeah, wait a minute, you sick a bear and a dog on me," <laughs> and then they get divorced. <laughs> yeah. So. Yep. So I think we we can connect that to the next myth that, that I want to go in. Go ahead. Um. Not a, it's gonna be short. It's pr- it's about Valhalla, and Ooh, that's like one of the good. most. Uh, after oh. that, I would like to go into one more thing about Loki after your sure. Because it we'll kind of we'll connects to the whole. We'll thing. go to Valhalla, Loki, and then we will close with Ragnarok as we're running out awesome. of time. <laughs> so with Valhalla, of course, it's one of you know the most well-known theories. There is a there is a drinks called Valhalla. There is a, a company <laughs> called Valhalla. There of is just so many drinks. uses of that word. <laughs> it's actually a. Um, I believe it's whiskey or something like that <laughs> called Valhalla. <laughs> so I love it. Valhalla was a big wooden hall in um, Asgard, in Asgard, yeah. which was the realm of the gods, and uh, that's you know that's heaven. That's where you want to go if you're a male soldier. Sort of. It was both heaven and a w- it was almost like a barracks for those soldiers who died and were waiting to fight with for Ragnarok. It was. Yes. It, it, yep. it was for the honorable. If you had an honorable death, which means if you died while fighting, you go to Valhalla and the Valkyries they carry you up. The Valkyries were women uh, with uh, you know big wings, like angels. I, yeah, sort of. War angels. With swords. Yep. You know, war angels. Kind of yeah, with swords, yeah. like mm-hmm. uh, Saint Michael or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> So they will come down the Valkyries, and uh, if you died in the battlefield, if you died an honorable death, according to their um, sets of what of what of what honor was, they will take you to Valhalla, where you know there's plenty of beer and plenty of food, and you will uh, get to meet you know your old friends and your family if they went there, if they had an honorable death, and uh, you will get to drink and fight with them, waiting for Ragnarok to happen. 
and then you will be the uh, personal military force <laughs> of uh, the gods. Right. Wouldn't wouldn't it be awkward if you were in a previous battle with one of the guys and he actually like they deemed him like honorable to go, but you were the one that killed him, and then later on and you died in a, an honorable way and then you both met you up meet and, him yeah and then second. you're like so, wait a minute uh, are we enemies or are we friends how the th- <laughs> few last couple hundred years have been uh i think they had <laughs> respect though so so w- when it comes to uh valhalla and honorable death uh honor is a huge thing right. that plays a huge part here i think they understood that when you fight you have to die in an honorable death mm-hmm. if you are really hate somebody you're going to make sure they don't have an honorable death so you will kill them in their sleep without their sword. Because if if somebody dies in their sleep without holding the sword, they don't go to Valhalla. So there's an instance of a soldier killing somebody in their sleep and they actually took the swords so nobody can place it on him while he's dead so he won't pass to Valhalla. Wow. That's not honorable death as again. And uh, also, you know, um, dying... Um, I think you could even go to Valhalla if you die with uh, the eagle torture. But I'm not sure on that. What is this? Can you elaborate Do you guys know eagle the torture? eagle torture? No. So the eagle torture <laughs> is one of the most prominent uh, tortures of the Vikings that they go to the most worst enemies. And they actually did that to uh, one of the kings in England when they uh, conquered. So um, they will... Uh, take your hands they will you'll be on your knees and they will uh, put your hands on two posts so your back is exposed they will um, cut you cut down your back Oof. and split you uh, and open you up from from the back right they will uh, take your ribs out barbecue style reach through <laughs> your body <laughs> while you're alive at this time Glad and the you, impeller style <laughs> so reach through your body Pull your uh, innards, no. organs, intestines. Pull your uh, lungs, your lungs out, <laughs> and put them. Take them out oh, from put them the on back, your back and put them on your back. Your shoulders, and then drop salt inside oh! of you. Oh, they already be dead. And you're not supposed to scream. If you scream, you don't go to Valhalla. While this How happens, you not scream the at that. Wheel of solid steel. Imagine wait a that. minute, wait a minute. There's got to be some scientific... Like, they have had to die before. It takes... 100%. <laughs> it depends like, how fast you do it, I guess. And it, I guess it takes some time till you die. Oh, my gosh. Um, well, I mean, <laughs> you'd asphyxiate. I mean, of course, in the movies, <gasps> they tried to, to exaggerate it, that they lived through it and they died at the last moment. But, of course, it's really like... They open say, your yeah. back, break with... Uh, a, uh, with... Um, Ice pick? With an axe, your oh. ribs reach through your body, take your thing and put him on top of your head. That's like insane. You must go through, like, go into shock after a yeah, while. Yeah, literally. And, like, like, your body, your adrenaline must just be, like, just pumping. Shut you down. That's, yeah, for real. That wasn't, you know, like, the norm for people, but it, it was for people <sighs> that they really hate it. Um, well, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> so, I'm right after this, we're talking about uh, Ragnarok and clothes. I kind of want to set something straight about Loki. Go, he yes, was please. not a good person. Well, we all knew that. <laughs> <laughs> but what I mean by that is, like, a lot of people say, he, he was with the gods. No, he actually wasn't. Yeah. He was fighting for the destruction of the world during Ragnarok. Um, one of the best-known myths by him that people might not know is the death of Baldur. Basically, Baldur was mo- one of the most beloved gods of, a mo- of them all by everything. When he was born, his mother, Freya... Loved him so much, she extracted a promise from everything. I'm talking that rock to, to like, grass. The <laughs> one... Rock. Seriously. The one thing she forgot was mistletoe. Shoot. Mm-hmm. And again, for you. reference. <laughs> for reference, she got a promise out of everything. Like, you could throw a boulder at him. It just would not touch him. Wow. So, Loki seeing this, being a terrible person... Was like, I don't like this. I'm going to kill this guy. So he made a spear out of mistletoe and gave it to a blind god, Hermund. Oh. No, wait. No, no, blind god Hod, rather. Hod. And instructs him to throw it at Baldur. Hod, not knowing what it is, like, okay, this one hard will be fun. <laughs> Throws it, it kills Baldur. Oh, shoot. Baldur then goes to hell. And all the gods say, no, please, he's lo- beloved by everything. And she's like, let him come back. Hell's like, okay, if you can get everything on the... Everything. 
to cry for, to weep for him, he can come back. Everything does except one giant giantess named Tok, who is mo- almost certainly Loki in disguise. Oh. So Balder had to stay in hell. For as many crimes, well, this is a, a sequel to everything, he, every terrible thing he's done. For many crimes against them, the gods eventually forged chain from the entrails of Loki's son Narfi, Narfi and tie him down to three rocks inside a cave. A venomous serpent sits above him, dripping poison onto him. Loki's apparently very faithful and loving wife, Sigrun, sits at his side with a bowl t- to catch the venom. But when the bowl becomes full, of course, she has to leave her husband's side to pour it out. When this happens, the drops of venom f- that fall on him cause him to writhe in agony. When these convulsions happen, create earthquake. And in this state, he lies mm-hmm. until breaking free at Ragnarok. Oh. Okay. What's really cool is that's in fact, really cool. That's a lot of venom. Later, later, on, the yeah, bit, right? <laughs> later on, um, during Ragnarok, Loki said to to um, I think find where the uh, the words basically he uh, arrives on ha- carrying the giants to Ragnarok on his ship of the dead, uh, called the, I'm not kidding here the nail ship because it's made of the fingernails and toenails that hasn't been clipped by those who died. Oh God! That's and gross. as they die, it keeps getting built. So mm. that's clearly Loki <laughs> was not a good person. In fact, when he was mortally wounded by one of the gods, he refused to die till he saw the end of the world. Wow. And he was mortally wounded. He just di- said, no, I'm not dying yet. He's a tough man. And God. this kind of leads us right into Ragnarok, which I believe Chris will be taking. Yeah, what? please, Chris, go over the Ragnarok, and that will be uh, our last uh, part of our, our podcast. <laughs> so first of all, what is Ragnarok? <laughs> what is it, Chris? Turn our lovely... <laughs> Professor, <laughs> uh, Ragnarok is supposedly the end of the world uh, in North mythology. It's just a series of unfortunate events. Just <laughs> that's a good series. Yeah, it is. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> a series of unfortunate events that just destroys almost everything. <laughs> um, the world, as as we know it, and most of the gods and goddesses. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, Odin, uh, good old eye patch pirate guy will uh, die fighting Fenrir. Um, they will fight each other to the death, and Loki will turn on the Azir and fight Hemdall, and they will kill each other. Explain what Fenrir is. It's the wolf. Fenrir is the wolf that... Uh, uh, he's the Loki's su- son. Mm-hmm. Yes. He... Uh, nope. No. Who, fun fact, continues growing and growing until he eats the earth. Yep. Mm-hmm. Isn't that one of the causes of Ragnarok? Yeah. Um, and then um, Tyr Wolf, a uh, Tyr who is the god of bravery, personal challenges, all around a good guy. Yeah, uh, he will fight the watchdog Garm that guards the gates of hell. And will also kill each other. Just a bunch of like fighting to the death, and they both kill each. It's weird. Um. Uh, th- speaking of that, Thor will fight the Midgard serpent, the guy, the serpent that surrounds the Midgard. He's you're holding his tail y- in his mouth. You're uh, the earth together. You're my Gundam. Yeah, I'm just gonna say the world serpent, <laughs> uh, and kill it. But he will die uh, of the poisonous wounds left behind by the Midgard serpent. Um, Freyr will be killed by the fire giant named Surtur. Finally, Surtur will set all the nine worlds on fire and everything sinks into a boiling sea. Perfect. Isn't that fun? There is nothing the gods can do to prevent Ragnarok. Odin's only comfort is that he can predict that Ragnarok will not be the end of the world. You sound like a White House correspondent, Chris. (laughs) (laughs) The White House correspondent of Ragnarok presented to you by Chris Cote. (laughs) May I just say, Ragnarok's happened before. Mythology. Exactly, it's a cycle that goes on and on and on yeah. forever and, 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 and ever and ever. It's interesting and ever. because there's not. It's that's not the only culture that thinks of time as a circle. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it's interesting how different different cultures think of the percep- so, their perception. Of so time. either Ragnarok, you know, happen or we can expect it, or it keeps happening. Well, it every does. Time. It keeps happening. It happened in 2015, and then we're gonna <laughs> have to wait a couple more <laughs> years for it to happen 12? again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 I can imagine it was just like, yeah, it could be great. We all just die. <laughs> so uh, apparently there's some signs to Ragnarok. Yeah, please tell us the signs <laughs> so we can. I want to uh, know. So we can take a look, you know. Global warming. May, may <laughs> make sure we we know what to look for. <laughs> for real. 
Yeah, um, there will be some warning signs if Ragnarok, the underworld, or not really the underworld, is coming. The first sign is the murder of the god Baldur. <laughs> oh my so god, he's Baldur dead. Died. He died last week. <laughs> Damn it, Loki. <laughs> the son of Odin and Frigg, or Freya. Uh, Freya, Freya, not Frigg. <laughs> Freya. Those are two out, real people. The no, goddess, you're yes. good, you got it. Um, which has already happened. The second sign will be the three uninterrupted, uninterrupted long cold winters that will last for three years with no summer in between. Knowing Umpy, that's like real close. It is. Well, it's really close. County for you. <laughs> <laughs> the name, name of, of this uninterrupted winter winters are called Fimble Winter. During the, these three long years, the world will be played by wars, and brothers will kill brothers. I Isn't that, that great? I can connect with. That. I think that's been happening since <laughs> World War Two. <laughs> <laughs> so in case you're not getting this guys this is our last podcast for the world ends. <laughs> the third sign will be the two wolves in the sky swallowing the sun and the moon okay. and even the stars will disappear and send the world into a great darkness wow co2 <laughs> <laughs> that's a good wolf. can't see the stars anymore <laughs> and uh um, that's basically all the signs <laughs> so when when all these happen that's when the Ragnarok r- really happens just for context, the two wolves are named Skull and Hati. They chase the moon and the sun because they got lazy and didn't want to spin. Yep. Okay. I mean, there are other, like, uh, how does Ragnarok begin, but I, I that will go into a whole a new tangent. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I want to have, you know, ev- episodes particularly focused on, you know, just the creation, just the uh, gods. That's a, that's a good idea for next semester. Huge, yes, it's a huge topic. I think we're all, all of us are really passionate about this subject. It's a beautiful yeah. topic, and we can probably have a series of uh, developing our right. mythology uh, um if our listeners want to give us feedback and absolutely maybe yeah, just, stories uh, that they want to hear, follow us on the social media elaborate. on the uh, really Ampi History Club uh, page on our Facebook and uh, let let us know if you have any um, ideas on it. But uh, also, you can comment on our, on our YouTube v- videos and uh, let us know if you have any thoughts. I really want to go into Aztec mythology because there is an actual god of chocolate. That's love it. Sounds like good. All right, so. Well, um, that's all for today's episode of the History Hour. And uh, thank you so much for listening. And thank you to WPI for uh, hosting uh, and being uh, our platform uh, sponsor. Uh, Join us again next week when we talk about the history of propaganda. And uh, make sure you tune in to WPI 92.1 FM uh, next Saturday at 4 p.m. so you never miss an episode. So also for previous and future episodes of the History Hour podcast, we're now available on both SoundCloud and YouTube. So make sure you search and uh, like our pages by simply uh, searching History Hour Podcast. And um, that's all for Mythology uh, this evening. And uh, we hope you have a great uh, rest of your week from all of us here at the uh, History Hour Podcast. And um, yeah, thank you so much for listening. Skull See you later. Good luck when Ragnarok happens. <laughs> <laughs>